Welcome everybody to my 2023 Kenner Spiel des Jahres nominees exploration. I'm going to tell you what these games offer. I've got all three of the nominees right here, have played them and enjoyed them immensely. I have to say just straight from the top that these are three dynamite games. I think they did a great job picking them. So the very first one that I want to uh, mention is just Challengers. This is uh, designed by Johannes Krenner and Marcus um, Slawitzczyk um, uh, from production company One More Time Games, Z-Man Games Distribution. And it's described as a turbulent tournament game for one to eight people and eight and above. And next is Iki. This is designed by Kuda Yamada and produced and distributed by Giant Rock. Sorry, we are French. Uh, it's described as trading race through historic Tokyo for two to four people, 14 and up. And then lastly, Planet Unknown, designed by Ryan Lambert and Adam Rayberg, um, distributed, produced by Stroman Games and Adam's Apple Games, described as a productive planet puzzle for one to six players, um, age 10 and up. So those are all of our descriptions for these three um, nominees. What I'm going to do is unpack these and just show you what some of the components are and how the game plays so that you get a really good feel for what kinds of mechanics and um, essentially strategies uh, that, that players are going to have to employ in order to uh, win these games. Um, all three of them are competitive. Uh, as compared to the Spiel des Jahres, there were two that were cooperative. All right, let's check out what Challengers offers, what it looks like, and what the game comes with. So the very first thing you're going to notice is that there are these mats. These are the, the neoprene rollout mats. You're going to place this between you and one other player at the table, and there are going to be multiple mats laid out on the table depending on the amount of players. And you are simply going to do a head-to-head -head challenge against them. You're going to get your deck. Everybody starts with this kind of start deck, and you're going to um, grab these cards and uh, shuffle them up. That's all you do is you just grab these cards. Let me show you. I've got the bow tie deck right here. So my, my deck says challengers. I'm going to do this. I'm going to look at my cards. So you've got newcomers and I'm going to say newcomers because there are three of them. So while they are weak, there are three of them. And that's going to be really helpful when they get kicked out uh, and go to your stands in the middle of the round. The dog is really strong, not as strong as the cool champion. She's amazing with four points of damage and then talent is worth two. This is your start deck. All you do is shuffle it up and you are going to set your cards on the one end of the board that you're sitting at. So let's say this is the end that I'm sitting at. Now as a start player, I'm just going to flip over one card. And when you flip over a card, if your number that you played um, equals or exceeds the other player's value of their cards, then you stop. You just stop and you say, I won the flag, and you're going to bring that flag right over to your side. If it doesn't, though, you're going to keep drawing, adding to your stack. Okay, so did I meet my opponent's side? Yes, let's say they had a three over there. They'd flipped over the dog. Um, uh, maybe they were the start player, and now I'm responding. So whenever I take the flag, I do this. But then I splay my cards, I, I take this play and I, and I push it under, and now they only have to beat a two. Now they're going to look at their three of their dog from their hand, and they're going to have to put that dog into their stands. So when you're looking at this neoprene mat, there's going to be this side area, and there are six spaces for cards. And what that means is you're going to have to put out those cards, but you're only allowed to have six unique named cards. And that means that when you start drafting new cards to add to your deck, you're going to get new names, but that means you probably have to cull other cards. And that's why I said that the newcomers are really helpful because they can start stacking up into your stands on the side and not take up more than one space because their name is the same. 
So all you do is go back and forth, and uh, one of two ways is how the round ends. Everybody's playing at the same time, by the way. I'm playing my opponent here, someone else is playing their opponent over here, someone else to this side is playing their opponent, and you will just play your cards, again, one at a time, trying to meet or beat your opponent's top card value. If your opponent cannot beat your value that's listed, you win. And if your opponent runs out of space, on the side of the neoprene mat where they put their previously played cards, you win the round and you're gonna win the trophy. So I got all these trophies in here. Let's say it's round three. Um, you win this trophy, you flip it over. Ha ha, you got three victory points. These are secret. You don't know what's actually under here, um, but they're all going from, you know, first round is low points all the way up to um, seventh round is high points. Uh, let's see here. There also are just some amazing cards as you get into B deck cards and C deck cards because there are three different levels of cards, A, B, and C. And at the end of every round, whether you won or lost, you get to draft new cards into your deck, building it exactly the way you want to build it. So that is the game. The game is all in the cards and really how you're making your deck and trying to fight against everybody at the table, but just one player at a time. Okay, now that I've got challengers all packed up, I'm gonna flip it over, put Iki on top, and I'm going to talk a little bit about what this game offers, a game of Edo Artisans. So the fun thing about this game is that it is a rondelle. So the board is going to offer you opportunities to move in a circle and gain um, victory points and opportunities. So let me take all these guys. There's a bunch of sacks of stuff, by the way. A lot of player, a lot of moving cards. All right, so I'm going to get these cards out. These are the character cards. So let me show you this board. All right, so what you're going to see um, is this is a stand. This is like a, a place where you get to actually put characters. Um, and up here you've got a fire track because yes, there are going to be fires in these artisan um, buildings that you hopefully will be protected against. So this is it. I'm going to open it up and just kind of give you the broad view because there are, aha, four locations. All right. So take a look at this. This is the board um, and you're going to be moving around inside of this space right here visiting these shops along the way. And that's really where the game is at. So up here, you're gonna see, this is your time tracker. So we have three rounds and that's gonna be one season. And then we're going to do some season uh, changes and, and uh, payments and salaries and feeding your, your artisans. Then we move on and we have the next season. There's going to be the first fire, and that's in a uh, smaller player count game. Then we move on and have this season. There's going to be the second fire, and then we have that kind of income. And then here is our last. So we essentially have one whole year. There are going to be 12 rounds in the game. So what are players actually doing uh, in this game? So these are the player boards, and the boards are double-sided. One side tells you that you need to play this with a three to four player game, or in this case, you're gonna play a two player game and you're simply gonna follow these instructions and it's so, so easy. So the round starts off with um, players seeing who's available and who's available are done by seasons and these are gonna be the cards that you get to see. So for example, look at the back of that, this is beautiful. And you flip it over and take a look at, this is an engraver. This engraver is going to give people the opportunity to pay money for two wood resources. They also cost three to get, but they also give you a fire defense. And if you make your, if you uh, uh, essentially um, upgrade your worker by retiring them up to the top, they're going to start giving you victory points, which is really, really cool. So these cards are just stunning. They have a variety of bonuses. This is fire prevention. She also is really affordable here, the Shrine Maiden. The artwork is stunning. You, you absolutely see what's going on here. So after we see who's available for the round, you are going to 
take your worker and you are going to place them on one of the spaces that's available for movement. These are the places that people can go with their workers saying what they intend to move. Do you intend to move one space, two spaces, three spaces, or four? And players are going to play out these workers by their fire defense initiative. And if you come down here and say, I want to move between one and four spaces, you're not going to get the same option as other players to get for money or to buy a character. You simply just get one dollar, but it gives you the initiative to walk. And you will walk in the order of how, how if you place here, you get to go first. Here, you get to go next. Here, here, and here. So if you want to walk really far, you're going to go last in the round. But you also get to walk really, really far. You visit a location that has a person and you get to do the action of that person that you're underneath, and you get to do the action of the space that you're underneath on the board, which could be a variety of things. So you get to activate two different things. So this is your place down and get your money, put your worker out on the space, and then bring your worker back. It's super, super easy. Um, here's where you keep all the fish that you've collected, all of the pipes that you've collected, which of course you want um, to receive a variety of these five different colored cards, which is what the artisans come in. It is just a really, really interesting game um, with a lot of working parts. This is your, um, you know, hour and a half, 90 minutes uh, strategy game. All right, now that Iki is all back in the box, I'm gonna put this game over here and I'm going to pull over massive um, planet unknown. So we're just going to shift these two. We're going to put them right there on the side um, and I'm going to have these guys here. Okay, so this has a super cool interesting uh, Lazy Susan, which is a rotating resource with all of these different um, polyominoes in here of different sizes, different shapes and configurations. And I'm going to set that down here and put this guy up here because this is that deluxe version. It has um, everything in it with all these really, really cool bins and stuff. So I've got all these different rovers and different bins. And now I'm going to take a look at these boards. Okay, so players are going to have a planet uh, that they are going to place down all of these polynomials on after the start player has selected the different orientation. So this is too massive for my close-up camera, you can see right there. But if you look at this right here, they're simply going to rotate this so that it faces um, their quadrant. So they're gonna say, um, essentially it's going to be, you know, these rows that I'm gonna take a look at. These are the two that I get uh, an option to look at. So then you take that one and everybody where they're facing with their arrow placing, and there's an arrow on the table that you place, Everyone's gonna take that tile, one of the two, and they're gonna place it onto their board. And that's it, it's a nice simultaneous selection. And they're gonna place it down on their board and they're going to grab those movement opportunities on their resource tracks. And so they're gonna take a look at these guys. So these are their resource tracks. And they're gonna have these um, right here. There we go, fantastic. So you've got sieve, water, biomass, rover, and tech. And you're going to start with your cube there in this uh, dual layer board and you're going to move up on the track and it's going to give you opportunities along the way when your cube covers up those spaces. Um, it's also going to give you really really cool um, level abilities whenever you get to those levels in your tech all the way to the super tippy top that is fantastic. So there are unique um, and uh, universal tracks and planets and the tiles are kind of endless, but I mean, you'll see that there are plenty and plenty and plenty of different kinds of uh, planet configurations. So you can have everyone playing on the basic one, or you can have them all playing on um, the uh, totally different planet that has different rules and requirements. So the game is going to end when a player's not able to fit in the tile that is facing them. They have one of two choices and they can't fit either of them into their board. That's going to trigger the end of the game. And this is about... Again, kind of like Iki, it's a 90 minute game. Um, one to six players with some really, really fantastic, um, you know, event opportunities and really cool upgrades when it comes to um, personalizing every single game and making it unique and different. 
So how am I going to rank these? This is really tough, I'll say. But I'll start with my third favorite. This is this is my third place, and I have to say it got third because it felt a little bit out of its tier. And that's nothing to say against the game itself. I actually feel like it would have had a real chance of winning if it were in the Spiel des Jahres, and that is Challengers. So I think that Challengers is a great game. I just don't know if it, for me, is uh, the strategy game. I don't know if it's the connoisseur's game. I'm not sure that it's um, challenging enough for me to feel like it has the weight that both Iki and Planet Unknown have. They both feel weighty to me. Again, I think they take 90 minutes. I think they're both on the longer end of their, um, this is about, about how long the game takes to play. And while I think that Challengers is great, it takes about 30 to 45 minutes to play. It has a fantastic playing from one player all the way up to eight players. And it has this um, really great just two player challenge at a time with simultaneous play and deck building. Again, really, really lovely features. For me, it doesn't meet that Kenner Spiel des Jahres uh, feel. And so I think Challengers is going to come in third for me. And then that means it's between Iki and Planet Unknown. And I have to say that Iki is newer to me um, because I have had Planet Unknown and have played that for quite a while now. I have a video about Planet Unknown on my channel already if you want to see some more close-ups and hear a little bit more in depth about what Planet Unknown um, as a game works like. Definitely go and check that out. But I will say that I found Iki to be really nice. Um, I like it, and I like it for my second place. Now that means that I think Planet Unknown of these three, for me, is my Kennerspiel des Jahres. I think it's like definitely the top for me. I think Iki's really good though. I love a rondelle, and I love the, the choice in this because you have 12 turns to do something, and 12 just isn't a lot, even though in your turn you are moving you're also probably purchasing or investing in an artisan or getting some money. You're also taking up to two actions on your turn when you move around the rondelle walking through this artisan field. So, I, or marketplace. Um, so you do get to do a lot on each of your turns, but it's, it's good. It's really good. I just want to play Planet Unknown more. Like when I think about a game that I want to sit down and play, I want to play Planet Unknown. I, I think that for me, that is just super, super engaging. And while Iki is a really good game and a game that's going to stay, these are, again, great games. These are all going to find a place in, in my house. They're not going anywhere. Um, I think that the versatility that Planet Unknown offers players is really nice. Okay, so this is a um, one to six. This is two to four, so it has more of a restriction. And I think they both take about the same amount of time to play. I like the feel of that Lazy Susan moving around and you getting to select when you're the active player which, which particular two you wanna pick from. And you're really just figuring out your own tile laying, your own polyominoes on your planet. I like the fact that there are corporations that allow you to play in a unique way in later games after you've figured out the base play. I also like that there are different planets, not just the base planet. I think this game is kind of endless. I think this game is endlessly replayable, um, more so than I think Iki would be. I think after I would play this about a half dozen times, I probably will have, you know, kind of figured out the gameplay, even when it goes from two to the three to four player side. Still good. Still really good. But for me, Planet Unknown totally takes it. And I know that American audiences are more familiar with Planet Unknown as well. And I find myself in that category. So I'm not sure what the Spiel Committee is going to pick. I'm not sure. I would be incredibly surprised if they picked Challengers. I wouldn't be surprised if they picked Iki. So that's my take. I pick Planet Unknown. This is just a real treat. It is a real delight and I'm probably going to play it later today because I'm talking about it. All right, folks, thanks for joining me in my Kenner Spiel des Jahres picks for 2023. What I think is going to win and what my favorite game is of these three.
All right, I'll see you later.